This circuit over here is known as the integrator. It's a fascinating, fascinating circuit. It consists of a resistor and input, and the feedback element is a capacitor. I'm going to analyze this circuit again by looking at uh, currents. So we'll have the input current I1 and the current of the resistor capacitor and I2. And of course the voltage polarities are like this. And so again, the output is negative as expected from all amplifiers that are inverting. The value of I1 is very easy to determine. I1 is simply equal to V in divided by R. I2, on the other hand, is a little bit trickier. I2 is equal to the capacitance times the voltage across it divided by the amount of time that voltage is changing. So now notice that uh, if there was no voltage across this capacitor, or if the voltage across this capacitor was constant, then there would be no current. So that's why we have a change in voltage or a change in time. Because if, if there's no change in time or no change in voltage, this value goes to, goes to zero. Now remember that uh, this over here is a ground. And so therefore, the inverting input over here, this is a virtual ground. And that means that the voltage at this end of the capacitor is really zero. So the voltage at the capacitor seeds across it is minus V out. Now, recall that neither of these two inputs actually draws current. So therefore, I1 is equal to I2. So we'll just uh, write that down. I1 is equal to I2. The current's got no place else to go but through those two components. So that means that V in divided by R is equal to minus C delta V out divided by delta T. Now what we'd like to do is of course we'd like to find the expression for V out. So we'll take this, these two components together which we'll solve for them. So we can rewrite the expression as delta V out divided by delta T is equal to minus 1 over RC V in. Now the question that comes about is how do we find V out? Because we know what delta V out divided by delta T is. Well, the way that we find what V out is, is we do the opposite of this function. So if this was a log, we take the anti-log, for example. Well, this is a derivative. A derivative is a change over a change. So we would do the opposite mathematical function, which is an integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this side, and we're going to integrate this side. Now, this side, if one was a mathematician, would be written something like this. It would be written as dv out divided by dt is equal to minus 1 over rc v in. But uh, typically, uh, electronics engineering students uh, it's a lot easier to start off by using just the little deltas rather than these much more formal uh, dt's. So we're going to just uh, integrate this. So to do that, we put our integral sign in front and take this, d, d out, dt, and the derivative with respect to dt is equal to minus. This is a constant, so the constant comes in front of our integral. And this, of course, is what's changing. Integral of v in dt. From here, we can simplify this enormously. Notice the dt is cancelled. The integral of dv out, of course, is v out is equal to minus 1 over rc, the integral of v in dt. And there it is. The ideal integrator. The output is some constant times the integral of the input. A very, very interesting circuit indeed. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that there's a slight problem with the circuit, and the, the problem is that uh, this capacitor does not pass DC. 
There always has to be an alternating voltage. But even if there is uh, an AC signal all the time, it's possible for this capacitor to accumulate enough charge to actually latch up and stop working. So what that means is we have to provide some way to prevent the capacitor from latching up. We have to find some way to discharge the capacitor in the eventuality that uh, there is a, a buildup of charge. Now to do that, you can put a second resistor across here as a discharge path for this capacitor. But of course the resistor should not be influential in the overall response of the circuit, only at low frequencies. So this resistor over here should be greater than 10 times this resistor over here. Should be greater than that. As you can see for DC, this would be open circuit, and the open circuit gain would be in fact infinity. Whereas here the open circuit gain would be at least 10, we could make it 100, or whatever the operational amplifier our circuit can tolerate. But it should be a resistor that's large enough that it's not going to influence the, um, the signal at the point where we want to do the analysis. Now, herein lies um, a, bit of a, a bit of a trick. How do we go about now analyzing the circuit? The easiest tool to use is the Bode diagram. The Bode diagram. So let's first of all redraw the circuit. Here is going to be the integrator. This will be R1. Capacitor and R2. Now, Bode had came up with a very, very interesting way of drawing or explaining or showing how circuits behave as a function of frequency. And the vertical axis is gain. Gain, of course, is, is this value divided by this value. Now, in this case, the highest gain is fixed. It will be R2 over R1. But uh, the scale that's used is a decibel scale, dBs. So for low frequencies, and this axis over here, by the way, is frequency. And it's not just frequency, it's the log of frequency, logarithm of frequency. So this gain over here is going to be R2 over R1. That would be how big this gain is. But in decibel terms, it will actually be 20 times the log of R2 divided by R1. Now beyond this point, we will get an RC roll-off because of R1 and the C. And it'll look like this. And this roll-off is going to be a straight line on the Bode diagram instead of the exponential curve that you would normally find if you plotted this on a linear piece of paper. This roll-off is constant, and it's constant at 20 decibels per decade. That means if you go up by a factor of 10 in frequency and, then, and uh, plotted the points, this would end up as being a straight line on a log graph, logarithmic frequency plot. Now this corner frequency over here, where the gain starts dropping, is controlled by R2. So remember we put in R2 to control the low frequency gain, which would have been infinite, with just a capacitor. So the frequency at which the gain starts rolling off is one over two pi C R2. And this point over here where the gain goes to 0 dB, and 0 dB corresponds to a gain of 1. This point is controlled by this resistor, R1. And it is 1 over 2 pi C R1. So what this uh, plot tells us is that in order to make a practical integrator, we have to have some way of discharging the capacitor. So we put in a large resistor here. But as soon as we realize we've done that, that's going to limit the gain of the circuit. 
and it's going to control the corner frequency where the RC roll-up is going to occur. And it's in this region over here that this circuit will act as the standard integrator that uh, this equation suggests. The integrator. 